Hello. Husky's back again with more Edmonton Oilers GM Adventures Mode commentary. Oh, that's video we kicked off season whatever this is. Let's see, 17, or 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So this is season 8. 7 or 8. I think it's 8. Uh, kind of a rough start. Our top 6 are all minuses. Um, I'm chalking it up to growing pains. This team is very good. We have 97 offense. Uh, our defense is only 91. Which is surprising considering our defensive core is very good. But I think our our forwards just aren't very defensive. But like I said, I'm chalking it up to growing pains. Lions just starting to play with one another. Not too... Not too concerned. Because in theory, this team, there's nothing wrong with this team. Our offense is disgusting. Um, it's just a matter of getting Velarde to playing more of a scoring role instead of a playmaking role. We should be averaging five goals a game, to be honest with you. With our how good our offense is. And we have a goaltender. And a decor that should not be giving up more than two a game. So in theory, we should be. I keep saying in theory. I should stop. Um, we shouldn't be losing games, let alone only scoring one goal a game. Losing 6-5 to five to Carolina, that, that one hurts because it's definitely a defensive lapse and possibly a goaltending issue. But I really don't know like what else to do with this team to try to get them to win. Um, we traded away Kyle Connor and a whole slew of other things to bring in Gabriel Velarde to play in that first line with Pink David and Veselainen. Oh, Timothy's hurt. That's not good. He's arguably our best defenseman, and he's out for three weeks. Where we're sitting at 19, 15, and 1. So we're, we're struggling a bit here. Nick Spalling, I don't want Nick Spalling. Nineteen sixteen and one. I don't understand. My San Jose team, which is 94, 94, 94 across the board, has 40 wins before they had 10 losses. This Edmonton team can barely get a fucking two-game winning streak going. Alright, and as I say that, 5-1, to 6-0. to nothing. I don't see a lot of close wins. We either get blown out or we blow out the other team. Like we just won five to one, six to nothing, and five to nothing. There's a five to two win. There's another three goal victory. The Sharks are twenty six, eleven, and three. Beat them. <coughs> Sorry if I sound a little groggy. I just rolled out of bed. Timothy's available. All right, we're not putting him in yet. He's back to healthy. 25, 18, and 1. Let's go look at stats before I put him back in. Uh, locker room chemistry is kind of going down. We're fourth in the division. We're five points behind San Jose. Uh, this, this, no, it's not good enough. It's absolutely not good enough. McDavid is 35 points in 44 games. Forsberg's lighting up that second line, which is good. Uh, that first line struggling, though. I kind of want to put Velarde on the second line. <clears throat> and see if he scores better with um, Nylander in them. Just for a stretch. Vicklin only has 21 points. I would like to see him have more. I think maybe a power forward isn't the best option for him. He's only 5'11", 190. He's got good physical categories, but I don't think he's a power forward. I think he's a two-way forward at best. And I think he might do better if I make him a two-way forward. Although, wasn't he was a grinder, right? Yeah, so I think I'm going to make him a two-way forward. Jesse Gabriel has 10 goals. Leipzig with 20 points. I mean, across the board, we're not negative anymore, which is good. We have a lot of high positives. I mean, that sixth or fourth line. Did I say sixth line? I have to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I said sixth line. Fourth line. Is plus 15, 18, and 17. That's nuts. 
that's honestly crazy to me that they're doing that well. So I think all I'm going to do is swap out Velarde and Forsberg, and I'm going to make uh, Vicklin a two-way forward. Because while I... Oh, man, these allergies suck. While Vicklin has the tools to be a sniper and everything, I don't know if I should... Oh, should I just make him a sniper and see how that goes? Let's look at his stats. I mean, his defense isn't the best. He's got good senses, good shooting. Um, two way forward or sniper? I'm gonna make him a sniper, and we're just gonna play Velarde, Nylander, and uh, Vicklin on that second line, and I'm gonna put Forsberg back on the first line, just to see if that first line really. If I should leave that first line alone. I mean, he has 30 goals. He had 30 goals last year. Playing with McDavid and Veselainen. So, I know he can produce up there. It's a tried and true formula. I'm going to put Forsberg back on the first line. With McDavid and Veselainen. Vicklin's going to stay with Nylander and Velarde. Uh, this third line's fine. Right? Plus two, plus two. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're struggling a little bit. But this fourth line is out of this world. Plus 15, plus 17, plus 18. Defensively, I need to get... What's his face? Back in there, Timothy. Now if I look at my plus minus my defense, plus 10, plus 4, plus 9, plus 8, plus 3, plus 4. I mean, not the best. Um, Dunham, I'm actually going to drop to the second. Yeah, Roman Yossi was not 90. <clears throat> I didn't realize he was 33. So let's actually... Still pretty early in the video. Let's see how good. Uh, I can use words. I promise. I make YouTube videos. I know how to speak. Let's uh, let's see what I can get for Roman Yossi. Oh, his values really come down kind of hard. I mean, it's still pretty good. Like, I'm not dogging the guy. He's 33 years old and he's still pretty highly rated. Uh, I would like to bring in a 90 overall defenseman, ideally, for him. I do kind of have to look and see what's out there. Zobril? Zobril? Zobral? 7.3, Jesus Christ. I mean, he's an 88. Two-way defender. Someone to come back to. So Boston is somebody I can possibly... Oh, they don't want you to see that, so maybe they wouldn't take that deal. Defenseman. Ristolainen. I don't think I'd be able to get Ristolainen. Plus, he makes like 9 million, doesn't he? 7.6. What is he, a two-way? Yeah. I have the cap space, right? How much does Yossi make? He makes 6.9, and I have 7 million. So yeah, I could trade. I could try to get uh, Ristolainen. Dougie Hamilton's 30. He's not worth it. Okay, they don't have anybody. Billy Polka. Colorado Avalanche have Tyson Berry. He's 32, though. If he was a little younger. Like, I don't mind the age, but I want to avoid anybody over 30. Like, I can go for 28, maybe. Callan Foot. He's not terrible. Makes 5.5. He's got pretty low trade value, too. But I want somebody better. And he's already maxed out morale, so he's not going to get any higher than 88. He would have to physically grow. Aaron Ekblad wouldn't be terrible. He'd be tough to get, though. Well, if I if I do Ekblad, what is that, uh... What's the value? Oh, yeah, that, that'd be tough. I mean, I have draft picks. Don't, no, I traded all my draft picks. I have a first next year. Will that go through? No. I'd have to give them something else. What else do I have that they want? Like, I would love to bring an Aaron Neckblad, but... Like, I'd have to give them... I don't have anything else I can give them. Those are all NHL players. Plus, they're a champion. They're not going to want to trade me Ekblad. That's just... That's silly. Uh, defenseman. Man, not a lot of teams want Roman Yossi. I'm surprised. I mean, I know he's 33, but... Ryan Pulak. 88. He's 29, though. Watherspoon. 87 to a defenseman. He wouldn't get any better. And he's probably maxed out morale, right? Yeah. 
I'm just looking for players that would, if they're not 90 now, would get to a 90 with morale, or even another year or two, or year primarily. Fedorov, top six defense, Sergei Fedorov. I mean, he's Sergei Fedorov. I mean, that's from Belarus. Honestly, he's an 87, yes. But he's only 22. And his trade value is rather low. And they want Roman Yossi. I know this isn't that 90 overall guy we wanted, but what's his morale? He's only kind of happy, so with morale, he'd be an 88. Plus, he's 22, so in a full year playing top six minutes, he should get to an 88 or an 89 even, possibly a 90. So I think this is our guy. Like I said, I know he's not top of the food chain defenseman, but he's still fairly good. Can I get a... Ooh, they do want to trade him. Can I get a second with him? Or is this asking too much? This might be asking too much. Oh, I accidentally took him off the trade block. Oopsie. Uh, defenseman. Sergei Fedorov. Let's see if this goes through. I don't think it will. I think the second's too much. Yeah. Uh, let's try a third instead. This also saves me uh, cap space come this offseason, which I might need. So Fedorov and a third for Roman Yossi. That actually went through. I probably could have asked for a little more. That's gonna hurt our morale a little bit, but I think the I think that's a good trade. Like I said, he's 22 years old. I think you give him a full year progression. He'll be stacked up. I'm gonna put him on the first line with Timothy. I feel like I'm th I'm 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 lisping a little bit. I'm trying not to lisp. Uh, put him on the first line with Federa with Timothy. They're both. Oh man, let's let's hope he gets a little better. Like I said, with morale, he gets to at least an 88. Who has the better shot? Actually, he does, so let's leave him on the right side. Alright, but yeah, that's what we're going to roll with. I don't see any anything else I can do to make moves. Let's just uh, sim out the season and hope we make the playoffs. We have a six-point lead on the Coyotes. Um, we should be a playoff team in every sense of the word, but just kind of just a little cautious. Vesselinen's hurt. He's out till February 6th. Awesome. So he misses three weeks. Make Velarde an alternate captain because he got hurt. I mean, we make that trade. We've won... Four in a row, so hey. We've given up quite a few goals in those four wins, but Sergei Fedorov. It's it's on it's Sergei. It's Sergei Fedorov. I just think it's funny that it's Sergei Fedorov. It's funny, I was spending some time on the uh the, the NHL the NHL seventeen subreddit, which is I think EA underscore H NHL. And <laughs> Some of the draft picks that pop up once you get later into this, like guys were saying like, oh, the Islanders picked Pecorine in the 2023 draft and he won the Art Ross Trophy in 2025. It's like, it's so silly. NHL can't get their shit together to make, uh, to make sure that names don't go together. I know there was a Pavel Datsuk that got drafted. Like, it's just, I find it silly. I find it hilarious, but I find it serious, silly. Alright, so Velarde's gone up since putting him down there. On that second line. He's gone up to an 89. Vicklin's an 89. Uh, what are we looking at points-wise? Velarde has even more points now since I moved him down there. So I think that second line rule... I mean, Vicklin's not real scoring. I might have to trade Vicklin this offseason. I like Henrik Vicklin. But 45 points, 25 points. I don't think he's going to get higher than 50 this season. He's just really struggling. His stats are good, but he just doesn't... He's not... He doesn't sim well, it looks like. What does Forsberg's stats look like? He's got 22 goals. Yeah, that first line's doing really well now. Yeah, I think we might need to look to trade Bicklin for a high-quality two-way forward. To play on that second line with Velarde or Forsberg and Nylander. 
But I don't think Vicklin is the... We have a 98 offense, goddamn. I don't think Vicklin is the answer for that second line. I wanted to use him because, I mean, he was my first overall pick, what, three years ago? The only issue with that is he was a grinder. And grinders don't sim well, usually. Even if they're high-quality players. So I think we'll see what return we can get on Vicklin this offseason. Uh, I don't know when his contract's up. I don't know if I have to... I might have to sign and trade him. He's been injured with a wrist sprain. He misses four weeks. Man. Man, I guess my team could stay healthy. Although I guess they're getting hurt one at a time, which is better than piling them up all together. Looks like we'll be able to get through the rest of this season. Let me just, uh... Put up my image software so I can make my thumbnail. Michael Raffle for a third, huh? I really don't think I want Michael Raffle. I think it's Michael. Mikhail Raffle? No, it's Michael. 82 overall. Bottom. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'll pass. Thanks, Bo. Oops. 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 Oh, I opened the wrong thing. Sorry. I'm trying to make my thumbnail for the video. So what's our record? 40, 21, and 2. So it's since making Milan Lucic for Jeffrey and a third. How much does Lucic make? He makes 4.4. He's got two years left, though. If he didn't have two years left, I'd consider it. But he's 35 and he's an 83. So no, I'm going to pass. No thanks. This one, two. Pass from text. Player. All right, let's go ahead and sim the rest of the season. Oh, look at that! We end the year with three straight road or three straight games. That's so dumb. Uh, select. I'll admit, I don't like to toot my own horn and pat myself on the back, but that Fedorov trade looks uh pretty damn good right now, considering how well we've done since making it. I mean, considering the last trade I made, I think it was in the Sharks one, wasn't well received, I guess would be the word. But that's how these gemmos are supposed to go. If you liked every move I did, well, it's, it's not, it's just not, no. You're not supposed to like everything I do. I mean, David's up to a 96 finally. Solar is up to an 87. So we've got our morale back on track, that's what that's telling me. Fedorov's an 88 without morale, so he's already grown one point. So now if he gets to a, a big old excited face, he'll be even better. Which is exactly what we need. Let's go ahead. We only have 85 locker room chemistry, so... It could still be better. 98, 91, 96. How is our... How is our... Was Corpus Allo back up to a 94 or something? 90, oh, Jesus. I would love Forsberg to get to a 90, but he's not going to. 93, 86. Okay. What are his stats? They're not very good, to be honest. You know, okay, Norris is worse, though. I'm still upset that we only have 91 defense. This is by far the best offensive team I've ever put together, though. Uh, just stat wise, in general, like attribute wise. They're not performing as they should be, but. Although I haven't looked at stats in a while, so maybe they have turned it around. Don't really care about scouting with this anymore. Granted, I really barely did any in my Sharks one where I needed to scout, but hey, whatever. Worked out in the end. Alright, so we're we'll sitting 44, 22, and 3. Kind of come back down to earth here in this month of March. I see a couple of losses. Do we end with just all division games? 
I mean, there's 13 division games on the screen right now, just in the last three weeks. We know Colorado's on the division, they're in the Central Division. I knew that. So either way, there's 11. And I know our last three games of the season are all division games. We played Vancouver twice, and I think Calgary the other time. Fedorov's up to a big old happy face, so he should be at 89 at least. Yeah, so we end the season with 13 of our last 15 games being in the division. Holy shit, is that how, that's not how the actual NHL works, is it? Isn't it like the last two weeks are player division games? Not the last 15 games? Like, you could suck for a vast majority of the season and have a good run at the end and squeak in. Just by virtue of the schedule. Billy Dunham is out. Uh, he should be back by game one. Oh, wow, we lost. Alright, so we get the... We get the San Jose Sharks in game one. Why does that not surprise me that we get the Sharks? My two GM modes have collided. Although I think the I don't think the seasons match up. I think we're a year further in this one than we are in the Sharks one. 97, 89, 94. Granted, that's because Dunham is hurt and not in the lineup currently. But let's look at stats. End of the year. McDavid only had 74 points. Kind of a shame. 25 and 49, 74 points. Velarde had 28 goals on the second line. Forsberg had 29 on the first line. So putting Velarde on the second line looks like it brought him out of his shell a little bit. I have to resign him this year, shit. Uh, Vicklin only had 52 points. Yeah, I think I'm going to move Vicklin in the offseason for a two way forward. Kind of like Veselainen. Kind of a shame that Veselainen doesn't put up as good of points as he should, but he is a two way forward. Kind of be expected. Stetcher, that fourth line man, plus 23, plus 25, plus 23. That third line struggled a little bit with Godolbin, Solara, and uh, Kreisky, but aside from that, we were good. I mean, Nylander, I think, had his best season. He had 53 points. I don't think he was here with a 70 point. He might have been. I don't remember when I brought him in. So that was a good season overall. I'm glad to see Velarde had a good season on that second line. That 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 puts me hope that I can leave Forsberg on the first line or even put Velarde back on the first line. And either one of those guys will score. I mean, they had what 57 goals combined. Surprised this Gabriel kid had 20. He had 40 points on the fourth line as a grinder. Like this is a guy who Vicklin was supposed to be. Uh, as for goaltenders. Corpusalo, not the best year, but he had his best year, what, last year? Two years ago? Whenever he had his best year, he sucked in the playoffs. Just two years ago. He was abysmal in the playoffs. Right? 20th one. He was 3 and 1 with a 288, so yeah, we, we got knocked out in 7. So maybe that's a good thing. But yeah, let's go look at the playoff tree, and I will end it there. As always, uh, leave your predictions for who do you think we beat. Do we beat Edmonton in the first round? And do we meet up with the Flames again? Or do the Coyotes take it? I'll leave your comments in the comment section below. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. That's what helps spread the series. Best way to leave feedback is the like system. And as always, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.